Hello YouTube, eating disorder recovery video number something. Let's talk what I weigh now, weights, numbers, calories, in, calories, out, the latest diet, what I eat in a day, am I keto, do I weight train, what is it that I get up to? Just kidding. Let's not. I would like to address and not address this topic. <laughs> As I said in my last video about it, you wouldn't be seeing that many videos because what we make present in our reality is present in our reality. And so continuing to speak on it makes it more present. However, helping people recover and seeing the truth of recovery, the process, is part of my personal pursuit to happiness and I know a lot of other women's pursuit to happiness because of cultural expectations and beliefs of what value is. Which goes back to another video that I did recently about your biggest pains can be your superpower. Made some connect the dot moments there. Um, it's not as if I didn't already know. That was a large causation factor in my eating disorder. Was my learned value that I had no worth as a human. <laughs> Nothing worthwhile to say. No skills that were not subpar. I had no personality. I was unlovable, unworthy, undeserving of attention. Except for my physicalness. I have had people tell me my face is funny. Thanks for just coming out with that. I don't know what that means. Funny like haha, -ha, like laughter. That's great. Thanks for the compliment, dude. But my body, you know, it became my identity. Having an identity is kind of useful because it allows us to direct our energies. However, we often have flawed identities and they're they cause us to direct our energies to wasteful, even destructive ends. Um, and we also don't realize that we can change our identity at any moment. I could suddenly practice the skills of confidence and learn how to fly an airplane. And instead of being a meek and a little eccentric. I'm, I'm just, I think my soul is eccentric. That's just not going to change. <laughs> Woman, I could be the next Amelia Earhart and go sail around the world. I could sell all my possessions and that could be my new identity. We fail to realize that we have the capacity to change who we are. We think that who we are is inherent to who we are. It's not. We are totally changeable people. Almost to the ends of, of any aspect of ourself, we can change. So if your identity is not serving you, start to define a different identity for yourself. And it can be helpful to deconstruct <laughs> that pre-existing identity as something you have to be when you start to really analyze the roots of where it comes from. I had a lack of coping skills. I'm still practicing my coping skills. I've acquired a lot of little tools in my tool case uh, to help me along the way so that I wasn't just turning to this obsession as a way to fill time, as a way to keep friends that didn't exist, passions that, that didn't exist, to fill holes in my life back to myself. It filled a lot of time. Obsessions always do. 
even if they're negative. If you're trying to run away from yourself, identifying with an all-consuming habit of any kind is one way to do that, but it's a very wasteful, point, pointless way to do it, and it just depletes you further and further. Um, also, those early formative experiences that I was both only to be valued for my physicality and through a particular type of intimacy. <laughs> what intimacy actually was and was not. Uh, all those negative things that we choose to pursue, to distract, to, you know, that they become self-fulfilling prophecies of everything we're trying to run away from. They make us the antithesis of us. So I'm beginning to explore not only why, but and how I can individually change my belief system, but how the belief system ties in culturally to the things that I believe in, the things that I value, a woman's worth, <laughs> that there's a perfect size for everyone, that your health is your most important, just as there's a little kid in each of us, there's a little old person in each of us who's going to be looking backward begging, just like the little kid is looking forward saying, please be kind to me, I've been through enough, don't hurt me yourself anymore, please. There's some little old lady or little old man in you somewhere who's going to be looking back, <laughs> going, oh boy, I wish you quit smoking 30 years ago, I can't breathe, <laughs> I wish you treated yourself better and ate better. I have brittle bones. I can't walk. If you're fortunate enough to make it that far, consider yourself over the span of life. Love, love your old, love your little, love your in-between. <laughs> and someday we're all going to be old and wrinkly and saggy and all the other stuff that comes with age. And in other cultures, age is prized. Wisdom is prized. Older people are looked up to. They are the prize of society because they, they put cultural emphasis on wisdom, not weight, not youth. Which I personally think is wise, but that's my prerogative and everyone's entitled to their own prerogative. The whole wisdom is wasted on the young. Wisdom, we don't have it. It's amazing we only used to live like 35 years would be old because my goodness, we barely learn anything at this age. <laughs> but, so, first, find other ways to fill your time. If you can't think of good ways to fill your time, Give to others, volunteer, do things that gets you in a happy place, a giving place, a good place naturally around good people who will give you positive feedback and removes time from you doing your behaviors. Learn skills and <laughs> tactics to cope so that you can work your way past your behavior in the way that fits you best. Go another step. Don't just eat. Don't just get bigger. Don't just be okay with eating whatever. So what? What was the point of your suffering? If you just get to a place where you can live freely. I mean, hey, that's great. I'm glad you're at a place where you can live freely. But, you know, it could be more than that for you. And for other people. If you really understand why you are doing what you're doing. And everybody's story is different. But... It can, it can help start a chain in the right direction for other people. So take one step further and try to figure out why this was you to begin with, why you got here. Realize you, your identity is always changeable. Realize the fruitlessness of attaining any kind of physicality because your physicality is changing constantly. Your health, if you care about your health and take care of your health as best you can, your body will follow naturally. 
to its ideal weight. And that ideal weight and health will carry you through to a glowing, happy, healthy, awesome old person that can inspire people half their age, that can outrun people half their age, that can outlift, outlove, <laughs> out on the town people half their age and give them something to look forward to. Maybe change the cultural perspective on aging too while we're at it. Let's just flip this whole thing back where it should be. <laughs> but I'm beginning to see how it all ties into issues with other women, constant comparisons, the whole cultural beauty ideal crap, um, a way to continue to torture myself, and yet, car driving by, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, gone. <laughs> At the same time, I still have bad habits. I weigh myself too much. Every time I see a scale, if I can get my feet on it, I'm on it. Um, I tried to remove all the scales from my house and only weigh myself at my doctor's, but I didn't trust the doctor's scale. So my boyfriend has two scales at his house, I have two scales at my house. Um, I was somewhere today and I jumped on their two scales. I, <clears throat> I can't see myself. I cannot see myself at this weight. I could not see myself about 10 pounds heavier, like I wasn't it very long ago. I don't, I don't see it. I see certain areas that are not what I want to be. They're deformed, like Elephant Man. And that's my dysmorphia. Visual distortion thing with my mind. I really live in a house of mirrors. And I think perhaps when I get to know my mind and my soul and my purpose better, the mirrors may come together. We'll see how that works. If not, I just have to have trust and faith and learn to let things go. And that's a hang up that I still have. Um, I have incorporated many foods that I used to not have. I'm proud of that. Um, I eat fat now. I have avocados. I ate an entire avocado yesterday. I eat Cool Whip. Not necessarily the best, but I love it. I think I actually burnt myself out on Cool Whip. Um, I even, yesterday, for the first time, I bought real cheese. It is, but real food. But I still have a problem drinking my calories. I won't have anything but diet soda or water or, you know, I can't drink calories yet. Um, real butter I avoid uh, still. I pick the fat off of my food, like meat and stuff, even if I will eat it in the form of a, an entire avocado in one sitting, or real peanut butter, or cheese, or nuts. Um, I'm not there. <laughs> I, I'm so much better. So much better, and I'm really proud of myself for that. I. I know I can do more. I don't... I, I had a period where I had a strict exercise regime, but I, I compulsively could not stop walking. I've cut that out. Um, I've given myself some breaks. I've taken this thing off sometimes, the speedometer. They're dangerous for people with eating disorders. Any, anything that, that puts you, lets you know what you're doing, you, you know, sometimes it's free. Freewheeling it is the best, so biking with my boyfriend and doing other things that I cannot calculate 
the calories. Exist. Eat well. Love yourself. Realize that looks are really superficial. It's not your identity. Oh, it's so counter. I, it drives me nuts because I realized the identity I had been living and I'm trying to claw my way the rest of the way out of is so counterintuitive to everything that I actually stand for. Now my bra keeps sticking. Where I'm at, I am... got 99 problems, but an eating disorder is barely one. Mm -hmm. I would say I probably wouldn't even classify at this point as having an eating disorder. I would say that I'm still pleasing and right, and I just don't think about it too much. And just live as close to a normal person as I can at this point. The freer I am, the happier I am, and the better I, I look. <laughs> Your body kind of knows what's best for you we get in the way. So you can trust that at least, that the more I release it, the more it takes care of itself. I'm well on my way. And someday, this full portion of my, where I'm standing right here, right now, maybe this yard, this location, this age, maybe my job, maybe everything in my life, including this shit, will just be some memory, guaranteed it will be some memory, but it may be some useful piece to a larger puzzle. So let it go. Let it go, ladies, it takes care of itself. Let it go, men, you are strong and beautiful and awesome and tough, each and every one of you, and I want to see you at a marathon when we're all like 80, jumping out of planes, traveling around the world, sharing your wisdom. Also, perceptual wise, manifestation wise, perceptions realize that body weight matters to me because it matters to me. Now is that because that's part of the issue here on this planet that I was sent to help change? And I need to walk through the fire of many a female issue to get to a place where I was impassioned enough and experienced enough to empathize and help change it? Or did I just get sucked into the vortex of what is? <laughs> but other people don't think about it. Not everyone has an eating disorder. There's a variety of different reasons. A lot of people have different similar stories. Not everyone winds up a drug addict. Not everyone winds up with an eating disorder. Not everyone winds up in the same situation. Some people are big and beautiful and they love it and they're in this culture and it phases them not, they don't, they don't, there's body image, they don't even think about it. Even in our culture, they don't think about it. Why do I? Why do I continue to allow that to be one of my reference points? Unless, as I said, because the freer I am, the more naturally it all comes together for me and takes care of itself, and the better I look, and the better I feel. And I don't know how I look, but I can tell by the way that other people treat me. And the clothes that I can fit into. So I do have my own reference point. <laughs> um, but mostly it's the way that I feel and the way that other people treat me. Because I'm in a good place. Um, so I need to figure out once I get to the bottom of it, unless I can use it as a tool for the betterment of everything on the planet, I 
need to get rid of it. And put it in my past. So do you guys. Love you lovelies. Men and women and they and them and us and whomever alike. Recovery is possible.